Praise God for our singing. Thank you for the praise and worship team. Alam nyo, talagang ito po ay pinagpapraktisan, pinaglalaanan ng panahon, getting extra time and energy. So we praise God for, uh, uh, you know, we can sing as one church. It's not an easy thing to do, you know that? Uh, you really need to sacrifice a lot of energy. Gali ka pa ng work and then you would have to, you know, do things like this. But you know, there's always joy. Amen. Amen. Joy in the ministry of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Alam, pakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. So before anything else, we would like, I'd like us to pause for a moment and let's have a word of prayer. We mighty God, guide us now, Lord, as we uh, study your word. We pray, Lord, that uh, you talk to us, commune with us, Lord God. And help us, Father Devin, to really uh, go through your word and learn from you. We love you, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Why don't you look at the person beside you and say, I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> And then add something, I praise the Lord because of you at that point. I praise the Lord because of you. Because of you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Are you happy this morning? Yes. Amen. Praise God. So aside from having the physical food we will enjoy later, we also have the spiritual food. This is the main thing. Amen. So open your Bible in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 2. Okay, Mark chapter 2. And we're going to go through some of the passages 13 to 17. And let me go ahead. It says here in verse 13, Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him and he began to teach them. So here again is the familiar scenario. Jesus Christ is beside the lake walking. And, and according to our story, the crowd gathers around him. By the way, I have entitled today's message, The Main Thing. The Main Thing. Make the Main Thing. The main thing. So here is Jesus Christ walking along the, the shore of uh, the, the shore, and then um, crowds gather around him. And then what did he do? He began to teach them. Now it has been always a, a recurring scenario. Whenever time people would gather be, be, uh, before the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ would teach. Don't you notice that he would always teach? And brothers and sisters, we ought to find ourselves in that mode that whenever we want to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, it's not that He's departing, but whenever time we, we enjoy the sweet fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, teaching is involved. Okay? So let us be uh, uh, teachable. Okay? He would want us to know His Word. Here is Jesus Christ and He will always say His Word. He would want us to know His Word. He would want us to know His will. He would want us to know Him. Point number one, fellowship with Christ involves learning from Christ. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we kind of like uh, miss this point because some of us would like to be with Christ because we want to feel good. You know, we want someone to hold us. Okay, we have a sin, we repent to Him. Or we want to ask something from Him. We go to, to Christ or we, we just simply want, you know, I just want that intimate uh, fellowship with Him. Or I would like to have peace of mind. I want to feel good. Now, this, these, are, these are not actually bad reasons, brothers and sisters. Let's continue to do that. However, if you think of this, every time a, a crowd gathers before the Lord Jesus Christ, He teaches. Right? He always teaches. And as believers, we who are growing in the Lord, you know, it would be good for us to come to Him and have that attitude. Lord, what do you want me to know from you? And then every time we read the Bible, Lord, what do you want me to know from you today? What's your will? Okay? Uh, uh, what do you want me to learn? What, what, what's the sin? Yesterday we have this discipleship. S-P-A-C. I don't know if I can still recall it from my S-P space. Sin to confess. P, promises, promises to, to, promise to, claim. to claim. A, action. A, a, action or attitude to, to avoid. Assimilate, C, command to follow, E, examples to follow, space, okay? And learning doesn't stop, amen? Brothers and sisters, while we are still here on earth, learning doesn't stop. Because the moment you stop learning, you stop living. Hindi ko ba? Para ka nalang gulay, lagi ka na. Hindi ka nalang progress And moving forwards, okay? People around us, they might find Christ in you. Okay. Or Christ might point Himself through you. Okay. 
And I believe Christ would want you to do something for the people that He brings in your life. He wants you to share Christ with them. Think about that. Amen. He wants you to share Him through you. Okay, remember what He told Peter? If you love me, feed my lambs, feed my sheep three times. If you think about that, Pastor, sounds so heavy. So it means every time I read the Bible, I really need to understand it. I really need to put it in my heart, you know, assimilate it. And every time I hear the message, I would need to look into my heart and seek ways on how to apply it. it, it does it mean, Pastor, that in my victories, in my failures, in my struggle, I need to learn your ways, your, 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 your will on how to do things and how to see things from your perspective? Is that, is it, is that it, Lord? What's the answer? Yeah. Of course, the... That's Christianity, right? Yeah. Now, some of us might become worried. Uh, pastor, I'm sorry, but I'm not Pastor Matin. I'm not missionary. Okay. That's not my calling. That's your calling, perhaps, but not me. I just want to learn. But let me tell you something. If you have experienced the Lord's salvation and forgiveness, brothers and sisters, just bask in His love. Amen. Bask in His love. Do your quiet time. Pray a lot. Enjoy the fellowship. You know, the next thing you'll do, the Lord will work with you, for you, and the Lord will work in your heart. Sometimes the next time you talk, you don't even realize you are already sharing. Amen? Because if Christ is in your heart, you don't need to be to rehearse anything. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you right now, what is in your heart? Perhaps as parents, what's in your heart are your children, the good memories. So if I ask you, how many kids do you have? You can talk, right? You can share. What's your fondest memory you can share? So the question is this. If Christ is in your heart, truly in your heart, and you have experienced His forgiveness, His mercy, His love on a daily basis, He is teaching you on that experience. So when you meet someone and you saw, this guy is full of problems. He needs the Lord. You know, you know bro, let me tell you something. You are now sharing. Amen? You know what? Sometimes you don't even need to say something. I can feel your burden. I would like to pray for you. Amen? That's the model of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever people gather to Him, He teaches, we ought to carry that same model that, so that people will not actually see us, but they will see Christ in us. Amen? Amen? And then verse 14, it says here, and as he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. So here is Jesus walking along. People are following him. And then what he do? Perhaps uh, in the Jewish uh, culture, he did the unthinkable. It's normal to call anyone, but he called a tax collector. Okay, now let me just explain the implications of that, if we are Jews, tax collectors are one of the hated individuals in the Jewish culture. Because they think of them as these are people who don't have respect on the Mosaic law, they don't respect our, our ways. As a matter of fact, they, we, they might even be traitors because imagine we pay tax to them, fellow Jews, we pay tax to them, and they give the money to our enemy. And some of the tax collectors are even dishonest because they collect more and put some of the money into their pockets. Is that a, a thing uh, to, to that culture? Now, if we are Jews living at that time and we hear that kind of you know, reaction, we might even hate tax collector. Imagine we are of the same blood, we are of the same culture, religion, faith, and you are here exacting tax from us to give to our enemies. What kind of person are you? We might feel the same thing. Now I realize this kind of talk uh, uh, is easier to pass because it's juicy. It's so easy to share this to someone. It so happened that they kind of like took care of that. Uh, 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 you can abuse a juice. This is something also tax collectors. This is something that they have passed on from centuries to the point that even the religious leaders are teaching it. Even the religious leaders, they are uh, um, 
separating themselves away from the tax collectors. And here is Jesus Christ ignoring all that norm. Could you imagine that? Here is Jesus Christ and then he calls Levi. Come, follow me. Okay. And then what did Levi do? He followed. He got up and followed. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus would even ask opinions of the perhaps the currently selected uh, disciples, if he asked them, who would you like me to call? I doubt if they would even think of a tax collector to call. So to them, they are looking at Jesus, wow, he, 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 um, he asked the tax collector to follow him, and he followed. Maybe they are thinking, what is that guy's qualification? Let me tell you something. I believe the only qualification in this for us, for anyone to become a disciple of Christ, is this. Is that we stand up and follow. Amen? Because if Christ calls you, He doesn't care your, about your background. If He calls you, the only thing that would qualify you to become His disciples is that if you stand up and follow. Amen? Amen. Some of us in this world will have PhDs, a good linguist, a charismatic personality, perhaps a good public speaker. They are a crowd drawer, and yet they will not be used by the Lord. Why? Because they did not stood up and follow. Amen? And some of us here would be used by the Lord in His mightiest way to spread the gospel, not because we are qualified, not because we have PhDs, but simply because we got up and followed. Amen? Pastor, what do you mean by following the Lord? You know, just be consistent in your Christian life. Okay. Uh, some of us, we bring our calling to our work. It doesn't mean you need, need to become a full-time pastor. And some of us have followed the Lord. You brought the Lord in your work. You're a Christian nurse. You're a Christian businessman. You're a Christian student. You're a Christian neighbor. And then every time you share and interact with people, you just share the Lord. Now, to these people who have done that, who have followed the Lord, there's a common experience. And the experience is this. When the Lord calls, He provides. Amen? Amen? So sometimes you don't even know what to say, and yet the Lord will give you words. He will give you uh, 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 things that you need. So the name of the tax collector, by the way, is Levi in this passage. But he is also called by another name. Yes. Matthew. And he wrote the book of Matthew. Right? And you know what? Matthew, if, uh, according to studies... The book of Matthew is a book that is actually addressed to Jews. The same people who might have discriminated him simply because he's a tax collector. The Lord kind of like equipped his heart to have a love to his fellow men and, you know, just uh, write the gospel to reach his fellow Jews. Verse 15, while Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. So at this point in time, the walking and the teaching ministry that Jesus Christ started along the south shore of Capernaum, it became like a formal invitation by Levi for him to have dinner with them. Okay, wow, this is a good uh, thing to end the day. Dinner. Amen? And, and I, I believe the, the people saw the unconditional kindness of Jesus Christ to those who are uh, hated by the Jews. And in a way, this unconditional kindness of Jesus Christ opened a new set of ministry, a new set of uh, uh, avenue to reach the people who has not been reached. The tax collectors, the sinners. What is it uh, in your Bible? How are they described? They are described as what? Sinners. Okay? Uh, meron ng racial discrimination. And you know when Mark kind of took note of that, and it happens like this, no? It, 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 does, it doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes when one person is called, sometimes his friends follow along. It doesn't happen all the time, but it's a good thing. That when one person is gets called by the Lord Jesus Christ, the family or the friend comes along. Some of us here came to know the Lord Jesus Christ because you followed someone who has been called by someone. What's my point? When the tax collectors and the sinners saw the unconditional kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ to their fellow tax collector, they saw, wow, this guy is different. He loves our kind. And they followed a 
along with, with Levi. Point number two, people need love and acceptance. Amen po ba? Amen. People, love, people need love and acceptance. Look at verse 15. While Jesus was having dinners, dinner at Levi's house, was the next phrase, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples. Kita niyo, that's the effect of Jesus Christ calling one guy. People follow him and they saw the love of Christ. Brothers and sisters, one of the greatest need of people right now is love and acceptance. Okay. You would not go to a room or to a place where you don't feel you are loved and you are accepted. Okay. As a matter of fact, they might not even listen to what you're saying. Okay. But the moment you they feel your love and your acceptance, then they might want to listen to you. So in our church, I would want us, actually every church, that ought to be the norm, that ought to be the culture. So if we have visitors and friends, I don't think our old friends would mind if we put more attention to our visitors first. Amen po ba? Amen. Amen po ba? Because we want to share the love of the Lord to them. And this is how Jesus Christ does things. Okay? Now, it's understandable why Levi would invite other tax collectors and sinners with him because he might not even invite the Pharisees or the scribes, but he would invite those of his kind. So, if we make a pact, Lord, I would like to be your light. I would like to be a, a, a guide, a teacher to other people. Perhaps you might reach first those who are close to you, a family, a friend a neighbor, we have to start somewhere. In our case, a co-fellow Filipino. Okay, tama po ba? An American, we, we can connect with co-Filipinos and Americans can connect with Americans and then the Lord eventually would expand our territory. Just like what He did to Matthew. Amen? Now, another thing that we can see here is this. Who among in that circle, in that dinner, was still pres was present? Not only the sinners, not only the tax collectors, who else? Teachers of the law. Okay. The disciples. Have you noticed that? The disciples were there. Who perhaps in their own lifetime, prior to the Lord Jesus Christ, might not have any personal contact with another tax collector. I would say this is the first time that they would have dinner with another tax collector and they feel kind of like uneasy. And yet, Jesus Christ joins them and joins them to be in that dinner. It's a teaching moment. Can you see the point here? It's a teaching moment for them. Now verse 16, when the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Can you see the picture here? Now, who did the Pharisees ask? Who did they ask? Who did they, uh, to, to whom did they address the question? The disciples. To the disciples. They did not go to Jesus directly. Actually, they would always do that. They would always go at the back door. Okay. And of all the, peop of all the people whom the Pharisees would approach to ask, they would ask the disciples who perhaps they, what's the intention? His, their intention is to mess up their values. To uh, create, uh, you know, a crack within the, that circle. Okay, confuse their values, infuse them with doubting thoughts. Okay, this is, you know, this is how the devil works. Right? He did not go directly to God because he wants to, hey God, I want to give fruit to Adam. No, he didn't do that. He went to who? To Eve directly. And that's how the devil works. But my sisters, if you have an issue to a brother or a sister, don't go behind their back. Because that's the devil's work. That's one way to destroy anything that the Lord created, including the church. If you have issues with me, please come to me. And, and you know, don't go behind uh, others because they will not be able to help you. Amen po ba? Go straight with me. Ako po, I go straight. I will go straight. And that always works. Ito po yung komentaryo lang, ano, not that we have anything like that here. But it, uh, I just want us to see something in the way the Pharisees work. They would not go to Jesus himself they would go to the disciples to put some doubts and uh, infuse some confusion in them. But this is a, now a wonderful fellowship, a, a wonderful dinner fellowship with 
with them. And Jesus is not about to let this happen before his uh, circle. So he shoots that bad idea. Verse 17, on hearing this, Jesus said to them, it's not healthy. It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Okay? Now, you know, this is a very familiar phrase. It was recorded by Matthew. It was recorded by Luke. It was recorded by uh, Mark. It looks like all of them kind of like took note of this a familiar scene. Every, it's a moment, memorable event. However, in the case of Matthew, he added a little more words. Look at your book, uh, your Bible, on uh, Matthew 9, okay, Matthew chapter 9, verse 12. Okay, Matthew chapter 9, verse 12. Tila niya po yan. Matthew chapter 9, verse 12. And this is how Matthew remembered that event. On hearing this, nakita niya na ba? Yes. Matthew 9, 12. On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But verse 13, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. That additional phrase, verse 13, is not found in Luke and Mark. But this is something that Matthew remembered. Okay? I desire mercy and sacrifice. Usually we get mercy and uh, attach it with grace. Mercy and grace. What's the difference between grace and mercy? Grace means getting what we don't deserve. That's grace. We don't deserve heaven, but that's God's grace. He gave it to us through the sacrificial death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone who repents of their sin okay, and asks the Lord to be their Savior, He gives grace. We don't deserve it. Mercy, on the other hand, is not getting what we deserve. What do we deserve? Punishment. Hell. Okay? But because of the sacrificial love of the Lord Jesus Christ, He died on the cross. Hell that is supposed to be on us, now He got Him on the cross. He gave us mercy. And according to Matthew, as he remembers Christ's words, Jesus Christ desires mercy. Okay? He desires to forgive people of their sins. Now in their timeline, Jesus Christ has not yet died. Mercy is something that Jesus Christ is about to do for them. Now in our timeline, uh, mercy is something that Jesus Christ has done for us already 2,000 years ago. So it is not something about what we do, but it is something about what Christ did. Okay? However, mercy can only work and apply for those who consider themselves to be needing of forgiveness. You got that? Mercy is only applicable if you consider yourself as someone that needs forgiveness. If you consider yourself as someone who is unhealthy and sick spiritually and is a sinner. And Jesus Christ saw the heart of Levi and the other tax collectors. They are already have that kind of a mindset. People hate them. They know the reason. People say, you're sinners, you're traitors. And they said, yes, we are. And in a way, perhaps they, they've become rebels. Ah, we don't care anymore. You hate us. Go away. You know, uh, we don't want to do anything with you. Okay? That's why, uh, you know, uh, that they were considered as traitors. But in their hearts, uh, they, they, perhaps they feel condemned already. Why am I doing this? But then again, they, they, they call us sinners. Perhaps we are sinners. Yes, okay. We are sinners, then we are sinners. And the Lord Jesus Christ saw that in them already. The feeling of guilt. And then Levi would like to share dinner with the same people he can relate with. Amen. Since they hate us, I will call the other tax collector. And praise God, this guy, a healer, a religious man, he loves us. Man, this is something. Now, uh, before anything else, Jesus Christ is not the kind of person that would tolerate wrong. It doesn't mean that he would say, okay, it's good what you're doing. You're exacting more to your brothers and sisters and you are trying to enrich your body. That's good. Amen. You're in. Jesus Christ is not like that. Okay. He would tell them, repentance. You need to repent of your sins. Remember Zacchaeus? He said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, I'm going to go to your house right now. And I'm going to have dinner with you. And then after that, what happened? Zacchaeus says, Lord, I'm going to return. 
the, the money that I have, uh, you know, collected more from other people. Why? Because Jesus told him, you have to change your ways. Okay? It has nothing to do with, you know, tolerating whatever bad things that we do. Jesus told him, you have to change. Honesty. Jesus was honest about him. And then going back, Jesus mentions, he desires mercy and not sacrifice. What is sacrifice? Sacrifice is something that the Pharisees and the, uh, uh, you know, the scribes are very good at. The rituals, the law, the offerings of this and that. As a matter of fact, they have become good at that. Okay? Anyway, that's not bad. It's a commandment from God. Uh, he, uh, he, he, he made it pass through Moses. It's nothing, it's not bad. But the point is this. From time immemorial, they have been doing that. They kind of like... Uh, 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 they, they want people to be impressed with what they're doing already. Okay? So that's why when they go around, they want people's accolades. Okay? The people's approval. That's what they want. Okay? They, they want a good image before men. So that's why they want to maintain that image of holiness. They need to step away from the, the tax collectors. Because it's bad for their reputation. They have been doing that for years. Okay? However, what happens is this. They did not get the accolade that they need. And, and suddenly, here is Jesus Christ having fellowship with the sinners. In Luke chapter 5, verse 27 to 32, this is another version of the, that same story. The Pharisees uh, actually complained to the disciples. Why is he eating with the sinners? They complained. Okay? And, and why, why, of all this time, nobody has really given us the attention that we deem we deserve? However, here is this newcomer, okay? Here is this newcomer that nobody knows, that we don't even know, and he's defiling our laws, and yet you give him honor. Can you sense the envy and the pride? Can you sense that, brothers and sisters? Okay. And in the, according to the book of Luke, it's not simply a, a, a dinner fellowship. It's a banquet in honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? In honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here is what the Pharisees do. They realize of all our sacrifices, of all the things that we have do, nobody has even given us a dinner banquet like what this guy is getting right now. Okay? So what did they do? They will create an issue the moment they feel this. Okay? And this is how complainers, attention seekers, KSPs, alam yung KSPs? Kulang sa kulang sa pat. I don't know how to translate this in Tagalog. Lacking in attention. English. Lacking attention. Lacking attention. And this is how the Pharisees and the Sadducees feel. We lack attention and yet, you know, of all those years, you give this guy the honor of a banquet. I mean, nobody has done that to us. I think if the banquet was for them, I don't think they would complain. Yes. Tama po ba? But because it was given to a new guy who has been defining them, who has been making them look bad, they complain. So what do they do? They create an issue. What's the possibility that what they feel is genuinely, uh, you know, valid? Okay. What is the possibility that they are doing it and they do not even know that they are sinning and they're just being honest with what they feel and they actually do feel hurt? What's the possibility? It's a possibility. Okay? They might actually really be hurt. They might actually be offended with Christ. With what, what's happening here. However, let me tell you something. It doesn't make them right. Even if they got hurt. Okay? When you are hurt, it doesn't mean you are right. To us Filipinos, sometimes when we get hurt, we always say, I got hurt, you hurt me, I'm right. Okay? It doesn't make you right, even if you're hurt. You have to think, why were you hurt? Okay. Maybe what was hurt is your pride. And pride in itself, it's not right. What does the Lord do to a, proud, a prideful man? A prideful person, a Christian? He would bring him down. Okay? And Jesus Christ, the wise teacher, gives them a word. And according to uh, Matthew, it says it's here. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And he said, It is not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. And I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now this phrase is really full.
full of loaded wisdom and truth. Uh, in context, it's about repentance. Okay, like if you consider yourself as uh, you know someone who doesn't need repentance, you will not repent. Okay? If you don't consider yourself as someone who is spiritually sick, you will not go to a doctor. And yet, in some sense, he was also telling the Pharisees, if you call yourself messengers of God, okay, if you call yourself servants of God, then why are you not spreading the message to those who needs them? You got the point. You are separating yourself to the people that needs the word of God. If you call yourself messengers, if you call yourself spiritual doctors, then why are you not among the sick? You got this? Amen. Amen. Yes. Point number three: the church should be about reaching the spiritually sick and not just the fellowship of the spiritually healthy. Because sometimes we have a misconception of what the church is. Pastor, let's call this one, he's a Christian. Well, let's call this two, he's a Christian. Well, let's call this again. this person, so and so forth. They are Christians, come on, let's gather together so we will be many. In a way, that's fun. But let us not forget our calling. Go into all the world. And preach the gospel, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It pertains to those who have not heard the message Yet, Yes. Now, we can only apply this if we have geared our hearts and our mind and our life into reaching the lost. As a matter of fact, you know, we praise God for everything that we do in the church. Amen for that. But that is not the ministry yet. Amen. The ministry, all the things that we do here, the preparations, all the stuff, praise God, you are doing that. And I... If you're doing it for the Lord, you love the Lord, amen. That's your worship to the Lord. But there's an underlying uh, motivation to that. And that is so that people will see Christ and they will come to Christ. The underlying motive is so we can reach them. Amen. Even our concert that we are planning to give on October. It's not simply to promote the church, but to promote the Lord Jesus Christ so we can reach soul. And that's the main Thing. Amen? Amen? To reach the lost for the Lord. And in a way, Jesus Christ was kind of like rebuking the Pharisees. I think you forgot your calling. It is not the healthy that needs a doctor. It's the unhealthy. Okay? Okay? It's not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. Okay? He did not call, I did not call the righteous, but sinners. Amen? As a matter of fact, if there's one skill in our church, in every Christian circle, that we need to develop, if we even call it a skill, it is the ability to share the gospel. If we even call it a skill. I mean, I'm just using a uh, you know, common language. Because some of us might say, I am I'm not trained. Okay, I get, I'll give you that. Well, I don't know what to say. Yes, I understand that. But then at the bottom of it, if you desire that I will become a disciple maker, I will be a soul winner, then you are doing the main thing. Amen? Pastor, how can I help in the church? I have one answer. Share the gospel to the lost. That's it.